let's find the time derivative of r hat and theta hat. In the previous video, I differentiated r hat and theta hat with respect to theta, so the angle that is used in polar coordinates. We know that in Cartesian coordinates, i hat and j hat don't depend on the angle and they don't depend on time. They are fixed. i hat and j hat don't change. But r hat and theta hat, the unit vectors for polar coordinates, they actually change depending on the angle. So if a particle is moving, the direction of the unit vectors are determined by the angle theta. And that the angle of theta is determined by uh, the position of the origin. So where are we relative to the origin? What is our angle relative to the origin? That actually determines the direction that the unit vectors point. And so first we need to understand the theta derivatives, and then once we have the theta derivatives, we can take the time derivatives. So I'll write down what we found in the previous video. You can find the previous video if you click on the link in the description below. There's a big playlist of all these physics videos that are dedicated to understanding quantum mechanics. And this is just a precursor to quantum mechanics. But we're still doing classical mechanics over here. So let's have a look at what happens when we differentiate with respect to theta. So the theta derivative of r hat, as we found in the previous video, was theta hat. This theta hat over here, this is a unit vector. And this is a unit vector as well. This guy over here, this theta, is just a scalar. That is the angle. So this is actually the tangential unit vector. What else do we find? If we take the derivative with respect to theta of theta hat, we actually get something a little bit different, but analogous. So if we have theta hat over here in place of r hat, we actually get minus r hat. So we get the negative of the radial unit vector. So these guys are the relationships that we derived in the previous video. How did we derive them? Well, we wrote these guys, these unit vectors, in terms of i hat and j hat. So we split them up into their horizontal and vertical components. And then we actually took the derivatives of those horizontal and vertical components, and we found these relationships. So over here, when you differentiate with respect to theta, you will just get theta hat. But if you differentiate theta hat with respect to theta, you get an extra minus sign. So it's not a fully symmetric relationship. There is a, a minus sign that appears over here. Now, let's use the chain rule for differentiation and actually find the time derivatives of these quantities, of these actual vector quantities. So first of all, let's take the time derivative of r hat. So ddt, that is the time derivative. So we're differentiating with respect to time. What can we do over here? Well, let's use the chain rule. This is the same as the r, the, uh, r, the r hat d theta times d theta dt. You see what I did over here? I divided and multiplied by this little chunk d theta. So this is just a little nudge in theta. So if we nudge theta a little bit, then we have to multiply by this time derivative of theta. So this is just applying the chain rule for differentiation. So let's have a look at what this is actually going to be equal to. This we can write as theta dot. We can use dot notation to make it more condensed. And this over here, we have this from the definition above. What we have is this is equal to theta hat. So what we're going to have is theta dot times theta hat. And that is the time derivative of r hat. Let's do the exact same thing, but for theta hat. So let's differentiate with respect to time again. So what we have is theta hat. We're going to differentiate that with respect to time. Then we're going to apply the chain rule again. So I'll write this out. We have the chain rule. We differentiate with respect to theta. And then we take the time derivative with respect, uh, well, the time derivative of theta. And what we end up seeing is, again, we can write this as theta dot. And what is this equal to? Well, this, from the definition up here, is minus r hat. So we can write this as minus theta dot times r hat. So we have a factor of theta dot over here and over here. There is no minus sign up here, but there is a minus sign here. That is, again, a consequence of this nearly symmetric relationship, but it's actually anti-symmetric because we have a minus sign being introduced. So if you differentiate uh, r hat with respect to theta, you just get theta hat. But if you do the opposite thing, if you differentiate theta hat with respect to theta, 
you will get minus r hat. So that is that anti-symmetric relationship, and that carries over uh, into the time derivative as well. But when we differentiate with respect to time, we have to keep in mind that the angle could also uh, be uh, dependent on time. So the, the angle changes as a function of time, and then the angle forces these guys to change. So r hat and theta hat both depend on theta, and theta could depend on time. If theta doesn't change with respect to time, then theta dot is equal to zero. So both of these derivatives are just going to be equal to zero because there is no change with respect to time. So that is how that relationship carries over. It goes from time to theta and then into the unit vectors. So we're going to use uh, these two relationships in later videos. Make sure to watch those videos. You can find them in the playlist and you can find them if you click right over here.